the women's creative dares their listeners to hurdle their dreams. Tune in to our weekly podcast to hear from individuals who are breaking down barriers, solving problems, and making the world a better place. Hear the stories of these business owners who chose to take the road less traveled. Join us for Not There Yet. Hey, everyone. It's Stacey Pugh, Director of Events with the Women's Creative, and I'm here with... Lindsay, Director of Community for the Women's Creative. And we want to thank you all so much for listening in and being present with us as we create space for women to share their stories. There are so many other ways to get involved with the Women's Creative. We'd love for you to join us for Thursday morning coffee, attend one of our events, or shop with us through Procure. Come find us on social media, download the podcast, check out the website, sign up for our emails, but there's just so many great ways to connect with us. We would love for you to stay connected with us as you join us in on our journey and lifting and creating spaces for women-owned businesses. Uh, Stacey, I couldn't have said it better myself. That was not- <laughs> I love that. Yeah, you know, we, okay, these these podcasts are so fun because we get to interview yeah. amazing women in the community. Um, just kind of going off of what Stacy just mentioned, we have so many fun things coming up too. We have, um, so Stacy mentioned our Thursday morning coffees. So every Thursday, we host the Stronger Than Coffees at 8 a.m. on Zoom. They are so fun. We uh, cover a micro topic e- each week from goal setting to time management uh, to PR planning, and it's totally free. So if you just go to our website, you can download the link to join us for coffee. Uh, we also, Stacy and our events team has been uh, deep in planning for the Procure Vendor Market on February 18th and the 314 Day Market Crawl on uh, March 12th. Yep. And then we have a Meet the Media Workshop on March 29th which is so fun. It's an amazing night where we bring representatives from all the major outlets uh, to business owners. So check our website for all of those upcoming events because we'd love for you to listen to the podcast, but also find other ways that you want to get involved. So we love to talk about what we're wearing, what we're drinking, what we're eating. We call this our local roll call. Roll call. Um, roll call. <laughs> Stacey, I got to know. What are you wearing? Yeah. What are you drinking? What are you eating? Well, today I'm just wearing a sleep blend dress. However, I will say it is from Walmart. This is a sleep blend dress from Walmart, but Walmart has stepped their game up with just like being, you know, resourceful with their with their brands. And mm-hmm. it's like one of my favorite like dresses that I've worn and it was like really affordable and cute. But I really the highlight of my day is the tea that I had this morning. And it is from a shop over in Illinois that is woman owned. Now I was saying it is black woman owned. Um, it is called Jacob's Herb Shop, and it's in Collinsville, Illinois. And it was free formed tea that I put into a little pouch, had it with a little bit of honey and lemon, and it was like the perfect start to my day. I love that. That sounds like a great start. Yes. Oh and well, Lynn, what do you have going on? Okay. Well, you know, everybody who's heard me on an episode knows I love my Kim Teak glasses. They're yeah. on my face once again. <laughs> but I actually use, so Skin and Wicks, it's a local yeah. Black-owned business. They are actually a member of the Women's Creative. And I started my day with their Peace and Love soap. And mm. I mean, it smelled amazing, but it also just gave me some serenity for the day. Okay. And then I'm also, I had lunch today at Balkan Tree Box in Webster. So, I mean, I smell great and I'm super full with, with an amazing women-owned business. Okay. I think I need to go try skinny wigs and go to Balkan Box and get maybe dinner or lunch tomorrow. <laughs> Ooh, yes, yes. Well, I need to get your tea. So we'll just yeah. trade off. <laughs> yes, we're just trade. <laughs> uh, okay. So, Stacey, who tell... I cannot wait for our listeners to hear this episode with Brianna Arps, the owner and founder of Mudo. Yes. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. Yeah, she's so amazing. What stood out the most by me is just like, you know, she's so raw and real and she probably she was to her background as being a writer, just being able to storytell. And I just love like how she just so eloquently told us about her journey and where she is going now with her products and what she is expecting for it as it continues to grow. And so 
I would just say that I was inspired just by her her realness, just like how real she was and, you know, just so open to share her journey. And if anybody wanted to jump into a business with a certain product that is not the typical product, you know, what that can look and feel like. That was inspiring and was something that I really took away from the conversation that we had with her. I could not have said it better myself. That was great. She was so inspiring. You'll hear me say this on the episode a couple of times, but we were totally fangirling because she talked about how she got let go, which was, you know, we hear that a lot for the women in our community that sometimes you do need that push and it's either a life change or a layoff or circumstance changes. And that's what gets someone to start their business. And I'm so glad that it did because she is amazing. The community needs what she's doing. And it was really, it was so fun to listen to her. Yeah, I agree. I can't wait for everybody to tune in. She dropped some new details about some things that were on her company. So definitely make sure you listen to the whole episode because you will know what is next for for Muda. Yes. And she also talks about the thing that she thinks has gotten her to really to where she is, is being able to be a storyteller and tell her story. So she also right. drops some golden nuggets on how to properly and effectively tell your story. So we hope that you listen to that. And if you are listening to this on Instagram or wherever you're listening to it, let us know. Because if you have any takeaways, we'd love to hear them. Absolutely. Okay, well, keep on listening and you're going to hear from Brianna, Stacy, and I. Enjoy. All right. Enjoy, y'all. The Women's Creative couldn't be more excited to record our weekly podcast at Shock City Studios. Their large format studio specializes in music, podcasts, and audiobooks. If you're looking for a space for you, call Shock City Studios. All right. And once again, this is Lindsay. And Stacy, and we are so excited to be on with uh, Brianna Arps. Thank you for being here. Yes, of course. Thank you so much for having me. I'm such a fan. But we're okay. we're we're a fan of you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, yeah. St. Louis girls link up. I love it. That's right. I know. Was me so too. Excited to like just know. Um, like we see your brand and it's blowing up everywhere. We're just so excited to just get your story and um, be able to share it with the world. Give it and- down. Yeah. So let's jump right in. Can you, we would love to hear, uh, and for our followers who maybe aren't as familiar, we would love to hear your story of really how you got to where you are today and um, like learn the story of your hustle. Ooh, that's a loaded, that's a loaded question. Like, like I've been <laughs> about this for 80 years, but for the sake of everyone's time, I will not. Um, <laughs> I'll say, you know, my journey, I think, to becoming an entrepreneur was very uh, coincidental. It was very accidental, if you will. You know, I think prior to, you know, starting out this way, I was an editor and I graduated from Mizzou, Go Tigers. Okay. <laughs> and after college, I uh, started my career in editorial in New York City and I kind of rose up the ranks rather quickly, if you will. And I was an editor at a popular women's media outlet and I was, you know, really enjoying my time. And all of a sudden, like I was laid off with like 40 other people on a random, was that Tuesday, I want to say. And it really shook my world. It it, like really, you know, changed the course of like what I thought I should be doing in this life and, and, and what I actually am doing today. So, you know, losing my job was very, um, horrific in a lot of ways. I really was thrown into, I would say, like a deep depression. I really struggled with self-worth because all of my time post-grad was spent, you know, in building that self-worth in a career and a job that was just taken from me. Um, And so, you know, I, I, I had to find a lot of different ways to cope, one of which was really leaning into my beauty routine and understanding, you know, Um, how beauty and in particular fragrance can be used as a tool for self-care through self-expression. And I had already loved fragrance from the get-go, thanks to like my mom and my grandma, who are like the best smelling women that I know. Uh, But it wasn't until that time that I realized why fragrance is such a huge thing and like the scientific connection behind 
our sense of smell and how it can trigger good thoughts and emotions and memories. Like there's a direct pathway in the brain between our olfactory bulb and the regions of the brain that, you know, dictate these things. And I nerded out, you know, got really into it and decided like, hey, like I don't really see a lot of Black women owned or just Black owned fragrance labels mainstream. Um, So I think I clearly have enough time on my hands now. So why not, you know, spend it doing things that I really, really love. So I found a new purpose in fragrance and perfumery and started back in 2018. That's when the idea for Mujo came to me. And then we officially launched uh, almost three years later in October of 2021. So we've been on the market for 15 or so months at the time of recording this interview. It was <laughs> February 2020. So we've been just moving and grooving ever since. That is amazing. Wow. Oh my gosh. I feel like you just told us like so many years of just things going on in like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Yeah, I know. But that is well, so exactly. I mean, that so that is what some people accomplish in a lifetime of a career. And yeah, you this is basically your kind of second career. And I'm so gr- personally so grateful that you have founded this because your fragrance, your fragrances are amazing. Thank you. You know, I I think God and I and I believe in God for those who do. If you don't, you know, apologies if you can reference God as a spirit or a deity or whatever you believe in. But I really think that you know, I believe in God and I believe in divine uh re re reinvention or what is the word? How do I this divine intervention, right? Like yes. I believe yes. sometimes things happen where we don't really understand them in the moment, but you know, it all works out for a better good. And, you know, I think that better good for me was finding a lane in an industry that needed some help and <laughs> that needed some help, not only from like a diversity or a representation perspective, but like in general, like the fragrance industry in in a lot of ways was backwards, right? Like when we, mm-hmm. we see fragrance marketing, it's not really telling a true story of the power behind the scent, right? Or what it can do for someone. It's a lot of vanity driven stuff. It's a lot of like marketing based on sex appeal versus, you know, if we know that fragrance uh, and our sense of smell is so powerful, why not, you know, empower people to use it as that tool, to use it as a tool other than like, like I said, strictly like vanity or whatever. So I, I think everything ends up working out how it should totally agree totally agree so leading into that like what do what do you think are like the three traits that got you to where you are today um Mm -hmm. i mean i i know like just i know you probably have three but you definitely like perseverance is like like you persevere for sure you know in your career but i know that they're like some that probably stand out to you that have gotten you to where you are right now yeah, I mean, I, I think I would actually lead with that. It, I would actually lead with perseve- uh, perseverance and, and resiliency. Like, I think I've always been someone who didn't, who doesn't take no for an answer. <laughs> I'm really stubborn in that once I put my mind to something, I will sit and fixate on it until I can figure it out or until I, I can accomplish it. And I think, you know, Although I'm, I've been familiar with beauty and I've been familiar with marketing and just in past things that I've done, fragrance and perfumery was completely new. So it definitely took a lot of perseverance and resiliency to 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 stick with it because I could have gave up a thousand times, but right, stick right. with it and 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 want to figure it out. So I would say that. I mean, I would also say, um, and I don't know if this is particularly like a trait, but I really believe in um, the power of transferable skills. <laughs> like I feel yeah. like you know, I didn't go to school. Like I mentioned, I went to Mizzou. I was not a business major. I didn't minor in business or anything like that. I, I was a journalism major. I was a, I was a writer. I, I was that I was that kid that really thought that they were going to be in magazines forever. Now magazines, I know, were almost obsolete. So you know, I didn't study formally to to learn how to do this. But I think that there's been skills that I've acquired throughout my journey that just makes sense. Like if you can tell a good story, you can be a great marketer. Or you can you can launch a successful business if you know how to tell a great story, whether that's your own story, right? Your founder's journey or 
whether it's your product story, your brand story, like at the root of it, it's, it's being able to communicate with people. So I would say transferable skills uh, and being a great communicator, I guess that is a trait, <laughs> is helpful. And then I guess last but certainly not least, I would say uh, my my empathy and like my mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a very empathetic person. I'm very I'm very much so a person that uh, is in tune with their emotions and isn't afraid to want how I feel, which is our slogan at Mado. I'm I'm very in tune with that. And I think that's helped me to, you know, develop products that can speak to other people. I mean, I think, you know, regardless of your background, regardless of what you look like, regardless of where you come from, we're all human and we and we we have a human experience that is rooted in our feelings and our emotions, right? So, you know, being so in tune with them, I think has been a, you know, a, a very valuable tool to uh, creating products that I think uh, people can resonate with. So I think all of that combined has has kind of helped get me where I am today. Okay, no wonder you are where you got today. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. Like, no wonder you, I mean, you know, Stacy and I, we, you know, I think we both know, like we've seen your perseverance, but just hearing from you and knowing the importance of being able to tell your story at no matter what stage you're in is so important. And yeah. oh my gosh, we're so here for this. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I think like all entrepreneurs, like that's, I mean, at the end of the day, like when you're communicating, whether it's with a client or customer or an investor or someone who's primed to give you an opportunity, like if you can tell your story in a way that, you know, they can somehow find a relatable common thread, like you're light years ahead of where you think you are. So yeah, t- Um, Okay, piggybacking off of that, what are some, do you have some tips for how to craft your story in a way that either resonates with others or, you know, people always talk about as a business owner or solopreneur, you need to have that mission um, or elevator pitch down pat. But what are, you know, your story is so great. And you told us in such a beautiful, concise way at the beginning of this episode, um, but yeah, what are some tips that you could maybe share with others listening who are trying to figure out what their story is and how to share with others who could make a difference in their business? Yeah, I think, you know, as far as like storytelling goes, I guess the, the one of the biggest pieces of advice that I've ever received um, from others who are in the field, who are in entrepreneurship and who have like gone on to whether, you know, become a multi-million dollar brand or have gone on to exit or sell sell their brand, like the biggest piece of advice that they've given me or among that has been, you know, don't focus too much on the product. Like, and it sounds so counterintuitive because we have to sell a product to make a profit or to make sales, but don't focus too much on the product. Like at, at your core, like really identify what it is that you're doing and why you're doing it. It's not just because this product, right? Like I didn't just one day decide I wanted to sell perfume. Like there was a reason as to why I did that. And that's how I've centered my story. You know, this personal experience that I went through and like the observations and the the things that I've come to see that have made me, you know, act and operate the way that I, that I do with Mado, right? So I don't lean too much into the product, although we have to have a good product, <laughs> You can't have a bad product and a great story because then people won't come back. Like yeah. After them, you can capture them, their attention, but but that doesn't mean that they'll come back or that they'll continue to support whatever it is that you end up doing next. So product is important, but like really need to get to the root of like your why. And and oftentimes some people may find they don't have a why. And like maybe that's why they're um they're finding it a little bit difficult to make headwinds in their business because they they don't have one so I think you know in these day and ages customers and consumers like they really resonate with purpose-driven brands so if you do not have a purpose or a why like I really implore you to find one and to stick with it and allow that to influence the products that you put out how you put the products out how you sell them what what the cadence is on newness like that your why should be the center of your world, you know? Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's like really inspiring. And I think like a good way for people to 
Like, just think about their approach as they, like, if they want to start a business and it's a product base, like, where they need to really start. Because I think that's where they just kind of get hung up on is, like, how good is my product and all these things. But it's about the story that you need to tell about that product and, like, why our people need to be invested into that actual brand. So Yeah, definitely. Because, like, at the end of the day, honestly, truly, sincerely, if, if someone wants to reverse engineer your product, I don't care if it's a recipe, a right. recipe or a, a beauty product or whatever. Like if someone really wants to take that thing and create a spinoff or steal it or whatever you want to call it, like they can. Like, they will. Like, yeah. Nothing they will. like extreme, like nothing is too special to be recreated. Even if you have yeah. a patent for it, like the technology can be figured out some way, somehow. But what can't be replicated, duplicated, imitated, whatever, right. is like your purpose and why you That's right. Thing. And customers are going to see that and they're going to be like, yeah, I, I vibe with this person. Like, yeah, I could go to go to some big box brand and get X, Y, Z product. But no, I, I really messed with what they said and something that they said really spoke with me. So I'm going to go with them. Like, that's Absolutely. awesome. How people make decisions when purchasing. So Absolutely. Yeah. That, yeah, what yeah. a bold industry. I will say, what a bold industry to break into um to, and lead it lead it out like that like with fragrance you know um it's so many other products that I think are like I would say like an easier route to build upon but you're like no I'm actually going to create a fragrance brand and gonna create something that's fresh and new and I'm gonna be bold about it and um I'm gonna do it my way like that's that's inspiring for sure oh thank you I really appreciate it because it's you know it's been tough. I, it's I'm, been I'm, tough. I'm sure. Uh, but it's been one of the most rewarding things that I've ever done in my life. And like when it comes to like looking at and seeing like what we've been able to achieve, you know, it, it, it all it makes all the long nights, the stressful moments, the, you know, the frustrations just worth it. What do you feel? So just lead it into that. What do you feel has landed as your greatest accomplishment so far? Oh, my greatest accomplishment thus far, I would say like in our infancy, it was like actually launching. <laughs> it, yeah. took forever. it took almost three years to get to the point. And like, honestly, I didn't even think we were ready to launch, but I got to the point where I was just sick of my own BS. I was sick of my <laughs> own being in the way, you know, it was like, you know, and I had to push me aside and be like, no, like we have to just do this thing now. So it used to be launching. <laughs> But now I would say, you know, we're in retail now. We're in a nationwide retailer um, that really aligns with our values and our mission. So to be affirmed in that we are on their shelves and sold on their website, that was a really big accomplishment. But, and we're also, you know, their first um, black owned fragrance label. So it really puts it into perspective of like, you know, we can do this. And when I say we, I mean like, anybody yeah but like we like my yeah. like black yeah. like black women yeah. we don't have to pigeonhole ourselves to being in a certain industry a certain sector of this industry like hair is cool makeup is cool like skincare is cool but like we can also do things that the other other people do like fragrance yeah. or whatever yeah. so that was a really big accomplishment and then also you know you know Winning awards is nice too. I'm not gonna lie. Like winning <laughs> awards is nice. Yeah. So most recently, our uh, L magazine named us um, or recognized us as uh, one of their Future of Beauty Award winners. So like that had a lot of weight. That's think- dope. Okay. Congratulations. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. You know, it, it holds weight. It, it, like that in particular holds a lot of weight because it it. it it signals, you know, like that we're on to something that like this way of doing things is really the future. Like this way of thinking about fragrance and how it can be a tool for self-care through self-expression is the future. Like right now is the future. So that means a lot. And we have another award to announce uh, within the next few weeks. I, I can't quite say it just yet, but okay. you know, at the time of recording this, but hopefully by the time this episode is out, maybe, I don't know, maybe, you know, we'll be able to, you know, really share. So winning awards is also nice. Oh my gosh. Well, they're well-deserved because not only are, I know, I feel, I can feel Stacy and I just fangirling over you because yeah, you are, <laughs> you, 
your story is amazing. The way that you've put yourself out there is amazing. And also just you pushing yourself and realizing, you know, a lot of businesses can sometimes be um, buried and um, exhausted in the launch. You know, you said earlier it took three years to launch. Um, so I'm sure it was persistence, but like what got you through that launch period of, you know, taking three years? What really, was there something or someone that really you leaned on to make, to help get you through those, that period? I would say like just a commitment to excellence. Like, you no, know, when I, I remember telling my mom and no shade to my mom, cause love you girl, but <laughs> I telling her like, hey, I want to launch a fragrance line. And she was like, one of her immediate responses was like, yeah, okay. Like, we can go to Etsy and get some bottles. Like, we can, like, wholesale this thing. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and this, is no this is also no shade to anyone who does that route, who takes a wholesale route in any, you know, in their business, whatever. Like, this is no shade of that. But for me, it was like, no, if I'm going to do this thing. I want to do it in a way that feels unique, that feels fresh, and that, you know, fosters excellence like anything that I put my name on or that I associate with has to be to a certain caliber it just has to be and so it took as long as it did because I was really gung-ho about getting it right and right is subjective sure but like it needed to meet my expectation of like hey if I'm saying that I'm frustrated by not being able to find mainstream black owned fragrance brands I don't want to just put out anything like, I want us to be able to compete with the mainstream guys. Like, I want us to be able to, like, maybe pop up on a Sephora shelf one day and, like, and know that we belong there. So yeah. having that, like, vision of, like, where I see Mudo being and, like, what I see us uh, turning into, like, leading with that helped me to slow down, to focus on making the right decisions for us and focus on creating something that I felt was solid enough to, you know, ultimately see the light of day. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> you're you're amazing. And I know we've said we've said it. Stacey and I, like we said, we're fangirling, but you're amazing. Oh, thank you. Y'all are just as amazing. You know, I really appreciate this. So Stacey, do you before we end and you know, just hear what's next for you, Brianna. Stacey, do you have any other questions? I'm really, like, I am kind of curious into, and this is just more felt for, like, people, again, going back to people who are, have an interest in product building. Like, how did you get, how did you, like, get that audience to come in, test your product? Um, what did that, like, look like to, like, bring in the right, people to like test your favorite know what was right to put out there in the market what just like really short what did that process look and feel like for you were you trying to go off a sense that were like this is what I like is normal for me or what I think it smells good or you're like no we're gonna make sure we have the right people in the room to make sure this speaks to this brand I know that's kind of loaded but I'm just like so curious and anybody who might be interested in kind of stepping into that industry like what, how did that look for you? Yeah, I mean, I think like any entrepreneur who launches a business, like like inherently it started from a selfish need, right? We felt like, mm -hmm. okay, everybody, this is from Jeff Bezos to everybody, right? Like everyone was like, huh, I want this thing. It doesn't exist. Can't find it. I'm going to build it. Like that is such a common thread amongst entrepreneurs. So selfishly, yeah, like I think our first scent, you know, I wanted to create something that I felt, you know, smelled really good. But, you know, taking a step back, you know, we did a lot of market research. Like I think that's something that a lot of brands, especially like younger brands in their infancy, like should really spend a lot of time on, you know, is really understanding like who your market is, who your audience is. So okay. When you do launch, you know, you can ensure that this is going to actually work. So we did have like a focus group. We also did uh, a survey. We also did, well, we did multiple surveys. We, but really we combed through what I would say hundreds, if not thousands of reviews online, just reading what people were saying or what they felt like was missing in the market. And in particular about um, popular sense, right? So, you know, 
we, we had a lot of data around us. So when we were developing Worthy, which I like to say smells like a hug in a bottle, which is that's what we designed it to smell like, really comforting and, you know, warm and, you know, uplifting and positive, right? Um, we had a lot of data to go off of. We we had COVID wow. data, like customers like this. They like this, they like that. Okay, let's put a little bit of this in there because, you know, there's some common themes here, right? And and we were able to to make it make sense. We also work with, you know, partners in the business who... Uh, have years and decades of experience, right? So they they could help us convert our concepts into products that uh, made sense, right? So it, it was a right. lot of work, right? It's not just enough to be like, mm, okay, and throw spaghetti on the wall. Like, don't get me wrong, we do throw spaghetti on the wall a lot, meaning we do test concepts that we hope stick a lot, but we really got intentional about doing the research and doing the work mm-hmm. so that we weren't wasting our time. That's good. I, I love that. that's 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 something to like get someone to know like where they need to jump start and just know they're like okay if I want to take it to this next level like you say main like mainstream and putting it to a higher level I'm going to have to work a little bit harder. <laughs> yeah, well, it can't just be about you like yes. all because at the end of the day like fragrance by nature is so subjective. Like I love worthy. A lot of people love Worthy, but I'm sure, and I know there are people who do not, right? It's such a subjective product. So in order for us to grow, I can't just be putting out things that I like because yeah. people like other things, you know what I'm saying? So you really have to, you know, understand who you want your audience to be, who's your target and and and, and create solutions that, you know, they would love and and, and, and stand behind. Love it. Well, we are so happy that you continue to throw that spaghetti at the wall. (laughs) I am a professional (laughs) spaghetti thrower. (laughs) I love that. Put that on your resume, my friend. Okay, Okay. before we close, is there anything that you want our followers to know that maybe you haven't shared yet? Anything exciting coming up for you? Uh, What's next? What's the next spaghetti? Yeah, you know, the next spaghetti that we're throwing on that wall <laughs> is um, our next scent, actually. So we've been developing other scents. Well, actually, we've been developing a few, but they'll roll out over time. Um, but our next slate of scents, you know, we've been working on them and like really, you know, making sure that we're putting the same intentionality behind them as we did with Worthy. You know, I think... This is the this is the true test, you know. They call it the sophomore slump in 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 product development, where like your first product it goes crazy and it's a wild success or whatever. But like maybe your second one doesn't do that well. So we're trying to like not have a sophomore slump, and so we're we're really uh, we're moving on it, but taking our time to make sure that it's the right scent that we're putting out next or the right scents that we're putting out next but yeah you can expect to see more more scents more fragrances more ways to like experience the brand you know maybe that's body care i don't know maybe it's candles i don't know all right like other different ways to experience uh fragrance and and and, and to appease to the customer the client the, the person who who loves that kind of stuff amazing well, exciting. Oh, <laughs> congratulations. Yeah. And you know, we're going to be, yeah, you know, we're going to be there for you watching, waiting and cheering you on. Thank y'all so much. Like, seriously, I think what you all are doing for um, women, uh, not just in the St. Louis region, but up just abroad or just in general, like is so special um, it's so empowering. It's so inspirational um, because we really do run the world. Okay, Beyonce was just saying that. Yeah, you say it right. <laughs> Beyonce, all right. Beyonce was something. So I appreciate my time with y'all, and you know, I I really look forward to to staying connected. We so appreciate you, uh, Stacy. I mean, I feel like we're both almost at a lack for words just because we're so. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> definitely and definitely it's just exciting to just like speak to someone who like you pivoted into a whole new career you know and based it upon something you're passionate about you persevered like your story is just super inspiring and I know that our listeners are going to 
um, definitely learn something from this episode for sure. Good, 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 good. That's that's the goal. If I can just help someone else, then regardless of what I sell or whatever, if I can just help someone, that, that I I know I did my job. So that makes me happy. Thank you. Well, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Not There Yet. Uh, we were so honored to be joined today with Brianna, and uh, you know, as always, these are the the these are the stories of the women who have taken the road less traveled and. I'm sure that you received so much golden information today from Brianna. So thank you again. And thanks for tuning in. Yay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.